Hey guys, Joe Cerrotti here. Thanks again for stopping by to another video. This is kind of a special video is it's, it's more like a training course. I'm gonna train you on how to put a mix together extremely fast using nothing but faders and pans. Now stick with me because we're gonna actually do this in real time and I'm gonna show you some ways that you can just get better at your craft and put a mix together very quickly. It starts right now. Okay, so one of the things that we always struggle with as audio engineers and music producers is putting together a mix quickly. A lot of times we can sit there over and over for hours and hours and days even just toiling over all these small little things that we're trying to get just perfect. And so this exercise that we're gonna do in this video is gonna make you a better engineer. It forces you to make big, bold decisions. And you know, as the saying goes, your first instinct is usually the right one. What I like to do is pretend that, let's say you have a gun to your head and you've only got two passes of this song to make it sound as good as you can. And you can't take any longer than that, right? That's kind of the, the mindset that I'm talking about. And you know, I don't mean to get all morbid on you, but <clears throat> just imagine it's super important and you've got to get it done in no more than two passes of a song. So if it's a five minute song, 10 minutes, you should have a decent mix put together, at least a very good starting point. There's gonna be compromises that you'll make but it points you in the right direction quickly. You know, where, where plugins are needed or where automation is required, you're gonna figure that out quickly because you're gonna use these faders and pans and you're gonna balance the mix as quickly as possible and that's gonna tell you really all that needs to be done from that point on. Now, before we dive into Pro Tools, I wanna tell you a little bit about what I did to help make this process even quicker. And that is the use of mix templates or track presets, whatever your dog calls it. But what I did was I brought in presets that I had for a drum bus, a bass bus, and a guitar bus so that it gets me going even quicker and I can start pushing faders and tracks into these buses and it starts to sound and do what I want it to do. And finally, before we jump into Pro Tools, you know, there's something that needs to be said about putting a mix together quickly means that you're confident that it sounds the way that you think it sounds, right? So that means speaker placement, acoustic treatment, you know, all sorts of things like that play into you being confident that this mix sounds good. And there's gonna be much more videos to come on those types of subjects. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and I just want to show you uh, a few things that I've done ahead of time to uh, help in the process of making this mix come together quickly. Uh, one is quite simply that I have two small control surfaces. So I use the uh, Avid Artist Mix. So I've got 16 faders in front of me with pan knobs, and mutes and solos and things like that so I can quickly get to what I need to hear. That helps me get a quick mix put together right away. Now you know normally I use then the control surface of the console one which is knobs for everything that I need in EQ gates and compressors and saturation and things of that nature. Now I'm not using that for this tutorial, uh, but if you're interested in either the Artist Mix or the SoftTube, I do have uh, links to those in the description in case you wanna check those out. So I don't consider it cheating that I've got a control surface. I think it's smart to use all 10 fingers to be able to put a mix together quickly. Uh, that's something that I've learned over the years. Once I got into the Pro Tools thing, of course this is years ago, I was still doing analog, but I didn't have a control surface because the only ones you could get were really expensive, like the Icon and stuff like that. So I just used a mouse and did one fader at a time. And I wondered why it took me so long to put a mix together, you know? Uh, well, there's why. The second thing that you're gonna see before I press play is that I've got 
buses set up for the drums, for the bass, for the guitars, and I've got VU meters on those buses. Uh, you know how much I like VU meters. Matter of fact, there's a whole playlist on levels, recording levels, metering. I'll put a link to that playlist in the description. Be sure to check that out. A lot of cool uh, stuff in there, I think. But I'm going to, from time to time, bring up those VU meters because I've got my buses set up in such a way with the presets, which I'm going to show you later, that I know that if I push all the drums up into that VU meter and it's hitting around zero, I know that everything down the line in my preset or in my template is going to do to the drums what I want it to do. So that's all. I just wanted to cover that. Now, I'm going to press play. I'm going to throw up a timer and I'm going to see just how quickly I can put a mix together. So let's give it a whirl. Here we go.
Okay, I'm not even sure that I started it at the beginning that first time. Uh, I don't know. Okay, but I basically got a mix together, so I've stopped the clock. And now, just for, since we, you know, I was doing a lot of soloing, let's, let's listen to uh, verse 2 again now, what I'm calling mixed. Um, at least a very good starting point. And remember... There are no plugins on these tracks. Um, so things have yet to be sweetened up except for my special trick, which we're gonna talk about, I promise. And let's listen from this chorus. So I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel horrible if I sent this to a band to go, hey, here's how it's starting to sound, you know, or here's a rough mix. I mean, it took me two passes. Now let's dig in to why that is. One of the reasons, anyways. So here's my VU meter for the drum bus. So what I do is I, I bring in this drum bus. Let's make this track bigger here. So you can kind of see, I've got a VU meter, okay? I've got the VMR. This is my drum bus strip. It's in my, you know, it's saved right here. It, it comes up the same every time. I've got the London, I've got some EQ, I've got a little bit of compression and um, a virtual bus. And then I've got an L2 just to catch some overs if there are any. Uh, let me show you what all that looks like when I'm playing the drum mix. Let me open all these up. See if we can do this. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try from verse two. So you can see it's hitting the VU a little heavy, um, but all I'd have to do on that is probably turn down the slam bus a little bit. That's, uh, well, actually, no, that's going straight to the mix bus. But I, I would, maybe at this point, I would group the drums and just bring them down 3 dB so that I'm kind of clear. And that's all I would do. So, uh, reminder, again, there's no groups, there's no automation on this uh, tutorial. It's just straight up. Um, what you see is what you get. And you notice there was no attenuation happening and I've got the threshold the same as the out. That's just to kind of keep me from ever getting over and I just chose minus three. Uh, same thing now, let's look at the bus for the bass. I've got the VU meter, big shocker, um, and I've got a VMR. This is a big one. All right, virtual channel 1176, 1176. Um, SSL EQ, crap tons of mid, a little high pass at uh, 30. Um, more mids <laughs> with this EQ. Um, and then because of all that mid range, I've turned the output down a little bit. Some distortion, I guess. And then I've turned the whole thing down. Now. When I, when I bring that preset in, it's, it's set and I just turn up the bass. And if I don't like the way it sounds, you know, I'll go in there. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't EQ or compress tracks, but I hope you're understanding the, the point of this exercise, which is to say, if you use this preset on your bass or on your drum mix or on your guitar mix, you're gonna do a lot less EQ on individual things. If I'm always adding mid-range to my bass, 
but it varies from 800, 900, 1K, whatever I'm choosing. But if I start with some on the bass bus, then as I start driving the bass into it, I'm already hearing it with that EQ, and I only had to do it once. Matter of fact, I didn't have to do it at all because it's in a preset that I just recall. And then I'll go in and I'll tweak if I need to, but it gets me started so much quicker. I think you get the point. Guitars. Uh, let's see. Um, VU meter, shocker, and VMR on the guitars. SSL channel, SSL EQ, just a little bit of three to one, slow attack, fast release on the guitars. Uh, let's get to a big section. You can kind of see what this is doing. So no more than minus three. Um, here's something I kind of want to show you for a second. Check this out. I'm going to bypass. I hope this doesn't um, backfire on me. I'm going to bypass and the guitars shouldn't get any louder or quieter when I bypass this bus. And that's how I know that my preset is working. So let me play it with it on and then I'm going to bypass it and let's see what happens with the volume. It should stay because I've, I've you know, changed the gain structure here with the tremor. But let's see. It went down a little bit, so then I would just adjust this up. Here we go. So now the volume's the same, but without the little bus, again, no EQ on any of the individual tracks yet, but with, without the bus, the guitars got a little bit darker and they had less sheen because obviously I'm, I'm high passing and I'm adding some 8K and I'm adding some four or whatever and doing a little compression. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving that shift, you know, to a little bit brighter overall. And then I don't have to add some high mids and brighten up each of my guitars if I want them brighter. Now, if one of them is too bright, I'll fix it on the individual track, but I think you get the point. And, and that's really it. That's the tutorial. It's to say, if you use some of these presets and you get your buses set right and you mix into EQ and you mix into compression, same thing goes for the master bus. I've got a VU meter and I've got my CLA mix, whatever it's called. Uh, what's it called? It's called uh, mix down, Chris Lord Algae mix down, the signature series. I bring it in, I get no more than two or three dB, mostly two of gain reduction. And that's how I know that my master bus is sitting pretty. And so I bring in my drum bus, my bass bus, my guitar bus, my, and normally I would do vocals as well. So I know we're skipping that, but in 10 minutes or so, I was able to get, you know, or maybe less, I was able to get the song brought together, faders, pans, it all sounds decent all because I'm driving into the EQ, into the compression of the mix buses, and I was able to make it come together quick. I'm rambling. I want you to try this technique. Practice. Practice mixing. Don't just mix when someone's paying you or when your band records a song or whatever. You should be practicing mixing. I practice all the time. I'll open up old sessions. I'll try new things. I'll I'll discover new plugins that I, you know, didn't know that I had, or didn't they? I didn't know that they did what they do, and I'll I'll make new presets. Um, anything that can get me, you know, to be a better engineer and to work faster, so that when someone hires me, let's say you hire me to mix a song for you, I want to deliver it quickly. I don't want you waiting a long time for this song. So I want to use my instincts. I want to get it. I want to take that, that first instinct is usually the right one. I want to quickly get it together so that I'm not spending hours and hours and hours or days on a mix. All right, that's it guys. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. 
I hope you liked the video. I hope you got something out of it. Leave a comment in the description. Um, let me know if you're digging what I'm putting out. Was this video helpful? Did what I show you make sense? Do you think I'm stupid and crazy? Leave the comments. I'll, I'd love to get into a dialogue with you. That's something that I really want. I really want to have and continue this uh, community that we have. So uh, feel free to please do that. And I will see you guys on the next video. If you like this video, then click that like button. I appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel and help support Sedoti Sound. And click that bell if you want to be notified when I release new videos. And of course, you can find me on all sorts of social media, so be sure to check that out. All right, guys, thanks a lot.